Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about Android malware. This specifically is an incredibly sophisticated campaign that a bit like that Steam game I covered a while ago, this didn't come from some sketchy APK site, because it's well known. Android, unlike iOS, it's not really a walled garden. You can actually go on places like, for example, this site here, APK Pure, and you can download APKs. Some of these are questionable. Some of them are uh, all right. I remember the one time I used an Android device, uh, there was this thing called the Amazon App Store that was reasonably popular. And as a result, Android malware isn't unheard of. But what's unique about this campaign, CoSpy, is that it took place on the official uh, Google Play Store. How did they pull that off? Well, we're going to go over that in a bit, but the the real key here, in addition to other things they did, was the malware had anti-emulation, which is quite common, but it also had a trick that I, I imagine that Steam game also used. It had a hard-coded activation date. If you ran the malware before that, the legitimate stuff, the Trojan would still work, but the malware did not run. So, Google's reviewers wouldn't see it. Now, if they were really going through this with a fine-tooth comb, they might find it through static analysis, but unfortunately they didn't. So what happens when you launch this? Well, first of all, it connects to a cloud Firebase, that's Google's database, which receives a small bit of encrypted data. That encrypted data contains an on-off flag so that the malware could be disabled if they wanted to, and it contains the URL of the command and control server. This is where the malicious activity begins. And it's bad. And this was targeted both in English and, uh, oh, I don't know what I did there, Korean. Uh, of course, targeting South Korea, because this came from a North Korean threat actor. Now it was in Google Play Store and APK Pure. A cache snapshot of the File Explorer app shows that it was available for a while and downloaded more than 10 times, which isn't a lot, but of course for this kind of malware, anything is too much. And they called the development account Android Utility Developer. Now note that File Explorer here isn't spelt right. Now here are the C2s and the additional information. Now let's see if this channel is still up. This is where it was originally. Yeah, the channel is still online and we can actually watch. Uh, Oh my. There's even background noise. This is so amateur. And this one did work, as did the other uh, main ones. They did have very basic functionality because, of course, reviewers would look at that as an indication that this wasn't legit, is the fact that it didn't do anything. So what did the spyware do? Well, it could do a lot of things. It could intercept your texts, another reason not to use SMS2FA, uh, it was able to track your location using the GPS to see where you really were. Could, of course, read all your files, turn on the camera and the microphone, and it would be able to do so without turning on the lights, record your screen, and key log. Now, the trouble is, of course, phone malware is great for a lot of reasons. First of all, people don't really ex expect it. But the other reason is because people use things like Google Authenticator and other uh, much more secure two-factor authentications that can be undermined. Banking apps. It is generally a lot more cases where by taking over a phone, you could fully compromise someone in a way you might not be able to with a computer because so many people are using two-step verification these days. If you've gotten the cookies, the password, and the Authenticator app, you have now got everything. It is functionally, even though they're using two-factor authentication, it is one-factor authentication. And while the specific app is down, you could see how someone could make the mistake, because there's dozens of these. These are all, as far as I know, probably legitimate, and they all look similar, and they do uh, what you'd expect them to do, just let you see your files. This is such an amateur video, I would honestly never guess this was some sort of APT activity. There's also a video. You can also see this has been around for years because this was uploaded in January of 2023. We can see all of these on virus total. They have no detections, although it does detect that it is obfuscated and checks the GPS. So there are uh, red flags, at least. And of course, part of that is most of these engines are not designed to test Android malware. There are tools for that. However, most of them are pretty unimpressive. You know, the usual advice, the main thing you do, 
Okay, here we finally got one that got a few hits. Don't download apps from anywhere other than Google Play if you can avoid it. If you are downloading apps from anywhere else, it should be the official source, not any uh, third-party APK sites. Those can be absolutely laced with malware. Stuff can sneak onto the Google Play Store. The only way you can really fight that is just being careful, not using super obscure apps and minimizing the amount of apps you download. The good thing is mobile operating systems by default usually have more security built in. Now these guys were clever in that they they chose fake tools that would need a lot of permissions to get you to hand over those permissions. Now it looks like on this APK combo site they've also got this APK. I think I just found a download. Okay. So we're on triage now, which is the only sandbox I know of that supports Android, and there's certainly no guarantee this will work, since this does have pretty good anti-analysis. But we might as well try this out. So we're going to upload this. I got a sample because some APK sites still have this, which is not great news because that also means potentially uh, some victims are going to still get this. Oh, and it looks like it's opening up. Yep, uh, we'll give it the permission it wants. And now it's given us, wow, it looks just like what we thought it was going to look like. And we can also see more apps. It's going to scan our RAM. Don't know what this, okay, this one doesn't work. Okay, so this is really the only one. And it's optimized our phone, apparently, our virtual phone. But at least it looks like triage has good enough detection that should be all right. Try, we can try cooling down our virtual phone. Looks like we were successful. Okay. Now we can just see if anything's happening in the background. You can type the name of it in the, into Google. Yeah. Probably the European address, so you just gotta... Okay. And now let's see what's going on. So we've got more uh, red flags. So we've got discovery, evasion, execution, impact, and persistence. So just like we were expecting, okay, ooh, that's a bit sketchy. So it is uh, decrypting, and it does go right to Firebase, just as we expected. Now, because the Firebase account in question is dead, uh, we won't see any further payloads, but it did, uh, we did see some indication of compromise. So that's another thing you can do, because triage is completely free. It's a good resource uh, you can use to check uh, programs and Android apps. So, that is going to be all for me for now. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this. Maybe, would you like to see more uh, mobile malware? I know I've gotten requests, and I thought about doing it before, and I thought this was a good opportunity. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye!